If you take a guy with a well-developed sense of suspicion, give him a five-year course in how to make people blush, you know what you end up with? A customs inspector. Here in Italy, it's even worse, because if you're an Italian, you have to go through the customs when you're leaving the country. Every innocent tourist is suspected of having a painting up his sleeve to sell in Switzerland or some other place. The result of all this official suspicion is that every Italian leaving Rome airport is just a little bit nervous. Take that couple over there, the man and woman with a teenage son. Think they're nervous? I do. And I bet it has something to do with that briefcase it's carrying. Un momento, signore. The uh, briefcase. But there is nothing but business papers. May I see it? See. Si. things. Nothing can go wrong now. Come, and down. Officer, that man standing over there, do you know who he is? Know him, signora? Every policeman in the world knows that man. He is the famous Simon Templar. No, gracias, signore, but I do not wish to trouble you. Well, it's not a trouble at all. I prefer the ILC if there's more leg room. Come on, we'll trade places. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard flight 109 for Geneva. First flight. Fasten your seatbelts. Si, signore. Signore, yes, signore. Excited? No. How could anyone be excited about leaving Rome? On vacation? No, oh, signore. My parents have to spend a few days in Geneva before we go on to New York. New York, yeah. Well, that will be exciting. See, but it can compare with Rome. Does it have to? I mean, Rome is Rome. London's London, New York's New York. It's a mistake to draw comparisons. Signore, I should explain to you. My parents are emigrating to the United States to live in New York forever. And you don't want to go? I want to stay in Rome where I belong. Where all my friends are, where I've, where I've lived all my life. My name's Simon Templer. What's yours? Alfredo Ravenna. How old are you, Alfredo? Sixteen. Alfredo, I know New York pretty well. It's a wonderful city. You'll love it. Signore, I'm a Roman. How can I ever live in America? Alfredo, people have been going to America for 150 years with exactly the same misgivings you have. I'm an Italian. I'm a Pole, I'm a Czech. How can I live in America? But they went, and they stayed. When you get there, you'll see what I mean. Will you, will you be staying in Geneva? Yes, for a few days. I'm staying at the Hotel de la Paix. Oh, that's where we are staying.
Alfredo and this uh, Signor Templar are becoming friendly. I don't like it. He was watching us in the airport, and now he's asking Alfredo questions. Helen, we are safe now. Sicuro. This man is a tourist simpatico. Please, do not worry. I hope you're right. Stay in Rome with Aunt Lucia. Because your father thinks you're too young. I'm 16. Then act like it. Father didn't want to leave Rome either. Alfredo, there's no point in talking about this move anymore. We're going. He had friends, a business, a beautiful house. But because you want to live in America, we give everything up. Alfredo, Rome is not the center of the universe. Personally, I can't wait to get back to a civilized country. A uh, civilized hamburgers and chewing gum? Alfredo, please. Oh, Filippo, he's at it again. Everything about New York is horrible, and he's never even seen it. Alfredo, why is this? Every time I turn my back, you upset your mom. She's your wife, not my mother. Alfredo. He's a very young. He's never accepted me, never, and I've tried so hard. I know, and I'm very grateful. It is just that he feels insecure and uh, frightened about leaving Rome. Sometimes I do, too. Filippo, please, we've been through this a thousand times. You love America. Well, I... Don't tell me you regret this already. No, no, I do not regret it because I know that it makes you very happy. It, it is just that I am not as young as I was, and to start a new life in a strange country is... Well, it's not easy. Oh, you'll be a wonderful success. I know you will. Will I? You'll have fun and make money, and, and everybody will love you just as much as I do. I am interested only in you, not everybody. And now, Karina, we have things to do, no? Yes. future. Yes. Tonight, I see Galen. What time? Oh, eight o'clock, as we planned in Rome. A few more hours, and all our troubles will be over. Playmate? He ran away. <laughs> I am not made for chasing after people or for football tackling. What is all this about? Well, you tell me. Who are you? I think the introductions can wait. At the moment, it seems you're just about to be arrested. Filippo Ravenna, from Rome. Married, 53, director of companies. And the visa for the United States issued uh, a week ago. Friend of yours? Oh, an acquaintance. How long have you known him? Exactly five hours and 37 minutes. Pardon? 
I never saw Filippo Ravenna before in my life until today. Oh. We were both on the same flight from Rome to Geneva. Why? Why what? Why were you both on the same flight? Captain, it's a large airplane. Mere coincidence? Exactly. During the flight, did you talk to him? No, I sat next to his son. Where are they staying? At the Hotel de la Paix. And you? The hotel's large, too. More coincidence. Captain, all I did tonight was try to save a man from being killed. Why all the questioning? Because, Monsieur Templar, I know your reputation and I do not like you. I don't like you either. But that's only a snap judgment. Monsieur Templar, if I choose, I can send you from Switzerland at once. I do not so choose. You will remain in Geneva until I give you permission to leave. Whilst you are here, be polite. Yes, sir. Bon. Now, uh, this uh, briefcase which Ravina carried, any idea what was in it? None whatsoever. Did he have it with him on the plane? Yes. So, the motive behind this attack is obviously a robbery. Obviously. Thank you, Monsieur Templar, thank you. And now you may go. Good evening, Mr. Templar. Are you waiting for me by any chance? I knew you would pass by on your way back from the police station. I was concerned about you. Was the inspector difficult? A little. He usually is. You know him? I have had some experience of him, yes. Oh, you mustn't think too badly of him. You see, he was 43 last Friday. What does that have to do with it? The traces of his past youth are now beginning to mingle with the signs of approaching decay. To avoid facing the future, he acts as though daily routine could cancel the calendar. You mean he wonders if he's still attractive to women? Oh, no, Mr. Templar. He wonders if women are still attractive to him. <laughs> Who are you? A friend. You mean all this attention is just Swiss hospitality? I am like a New Yorker who gets upset if a tourist does not marvel at the Empire State Building. I like all visitors to admire my country. Well, if you'll forgive me, I'll marvel and admire your country tomorrow. Oh, by all means, by all means. Good night, Mr. Templer. Good night, friend. Mr. Templer. Mrs. Ravina. I'm truly sorry about your husband. Thank you. May I buy you a drink? Yes, please. A bonnet. A bourbon and soda with ice, please. Have you been with the police? For two hours. They think it's a straight case of robbery. Oh, don't you? I suppose so. I, I don't know. The killer didn't pick your husband by accident. He knew what he was after. He didn't touch his wallet or go through his pockets. He just grabbed the briefcase and ran. But did he? What do you mean? I mean, he couldn't possibly have dropped the briefcase, could he? If he had, the police would have found it. They didn't find it. Did you expect them to? Oh, no. No, of course not. Whatever your husband was carrying in that briefcase must have been worth a great deal. You knew what it was. No, I don't. Mrs. Ravina, you're traveling halfway around the world. Your husband is carrying something so valuable he's killed for it. Yet you don't know what it was. No, I don't. Mr. Templer, have you got it? I'll pay you a large reward, $5,000. Mrs. Ravina, if I had the briefcase, you wouldn't have to ask for it. Let alone offer me a reward. I'm sorry. I'm really awfully tired. If you'll excuse me. Of course. Good night, Mr. Templer. Good night.
Alfredo, wake up. Oh, Senor Templar, I'm sorry. I, I went to sleep. How'd you get in? Through the windows. I had to see you. You know about my father? Yes, I'm very sorry. Well, she isn't. She planned this. I'm sure of it. She wanted my father dead. No, Alfredo, that's a, a pretty wild accusation. Mr. Templar, I know. All right, Alfredo, now suppose you tell me about it. Well, it's not so much what I know as what I feel. Alfredo, you're 16. You've suffered your first real tragedy. Don't lash out blindly at people. I'm not. I know she planned this. Otherwise, she would have told me what was in the briefcase. Maybe she doesn't know. Did she tell you that? Yes. She lies, senor. Three days ago in Rome, I asked her the same question. And she said to me, Alfredo, for now it is better you do not know. I will tell you when we get to New York. And she did not love my father. She thinks because I'm only 16, I do not notice things. But I do. A gesture she makes. The expression on her face when my father touched her. She hated my father. Alfredo, it's so easy for somebody of your age to misunderstand things. Inside, I feel it so absolutely. And sometimes a man must believe his feelings. Especially when they're all he has. Alfredo, on the basis of simple logic, I have an idea. And I think that we should investigate. Are you coming? Here, I should think. But why would it still be here? I don't understand. Figure it this way, Alfredo. If the police had the briefcase, they'd have returned it. Maybe yes, maybe no. Well, at least they'd have told your mother they'd found it. That's true. And if as you think your mother really planned this... I'm sure of it. She must have. And the man who attacked your father had the briefcase, your mother would know. Si. Yet tonight, your mother asked me if I had it. So? So your mother doesn't know where it is. You with me? I think so. Well, if your mother doesn't know where it is, and the killer doesn't know where it is, and the police don't know where it is, then it must still be in the bushes. But, senor, it isn't. I'm afraid of simple logic can sometimes be wrong. I guess we'd better get back to the hotel. Seen this before? Never. Was your father interested in jewelry? No. Well, then where did he get it? You think he stole it? Alfredo, it's something we have to consider. I'm sorry. But. But my father was man of great honor. Is that something else you feel? Signor Templar, I know my father. He couldn't steal. Then how did he get this stuff? Oh, Dio mio! I don't know. Alfredo, people pay sometimes to, to have valuables smuggled out of Italy. I know it's hard to face, but you think your father... No! Not my father! It's her! She's behind all this! Oh, wait a minute. Paul Galland, 137 Rue Blanche, Geneva. Dear Monsieur Galland, the bearer, Signor Filippo Ravina, can be trusted. His merchandise is most reliable. Oh, it's signed Carlo Vis... something or other. Visconti? You know him? Si. He was employed by my father. He came often to our house. Signor Templar, what do we do now? Now? Uh, go back to your room, get to bed. And don't say a word of this to your stepmother. And tomorrow? Tomorrow, I think I'll pay a little visit to Monsieur Galland. Good night, Alfredo. 
Good morning, Jack. Oh, good morning, Mr. Temple. Uh, you got the hire car? Uh, it's all taken care of. The, um, the black Citroën. It's right outside the door. Jack, you're wonderful. All the years I've been coming here, you've never disappointed me once. Uh, for you, Mr. Templar, anything, anytime. Thanks. Looking to see if you're a hero, Mr. Templar? Well, I was rather curious to see whether the press had picked anything up. I'm afraid the Swiss press is rather slow by American standards. If a story is good in the morning, well, it will still be good in the evening. Last night you uh, said you were a friend. Now I would like to know your name. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. My name is Kleinhaus. Oscar Kleinhaus. You are a Swiss. I am. And you live in Geneva. I do. Last night you turned up at the exact right moment. How? Coincidence. Was it? Or were you following Filippo Rovena? Oh, no, no, no. I assure you, I never set eyes on Filippo Rovena in all my life until I bent over his dead body. Then why all this interest? Merely because the frailties of human nature intrigue me. It's a pretty evasive answer. It was a pretty indiscreet question, Mr. Templar. And now you must excuse me. I have a business appointment. <laughs> Pardon, monsieur. May I tell Monsieur Galland who is calling? Uh, see, si, I have an appointment. Filippo Rivena. Merci, monsieur. Grazie. Ah, buongiorno, signor Rivena. Sono felicissimo di vederla. Grazie, noi possiamo parlare in inglese se le vuole. Oh, German or French, I struggle with all of them. But my clients come from so many different countries that I want them to feel comfortable. Sit down. Grazie. You have brought a letter of introduction, perhaps? Oh, si. Thank you. How is Carlo? Fine. Ah, he's a very up-and-coming young man. One of my best contacts in Italy. I knew you were coming. But uh, it is necessary to be careful. I uh, suppose you have clients from all over Europe. Yes, from all the countries where there are these annoying restrictions on foreign exchange. However, I have a very nice central location and Swiss money is good anywhere in the world. Also, I'm very discreet. Yes, I know. Uh, there is no law here against my buying anything I choose. And, Signora Avena, you can be absolutely sure not a word of our transaction will get back to the Italian authorities. Now, what do you have to sell? This is very good. Beautiful, in fact. I can give you 100,000 Swiss francs for it, or if you prefer, 25,000 American dollars deposited at any bank in New York. That uh, seems fair. But uh, this is not an awful lot of capital for you to start building a new fortune in America. Surely you have some more things to offer me. Well, I uh, left the rest at my hotel. This was a sort of uh, exploratory meeting. <laughs> That's very wise. And have I made a good impression? Oh, very much so. Good. Then when will you show me the rest? This evening. Yes. Shall we say eight o'clock? Va benissimo. Until this evening, then. Arrivederla. Arrivederla.
Garcia, my old friend. I have been looking all over Geneva for you. I'll have to thank you. You seem surprised, Garcia. <laughs> you didn't really think you would get away with this. What's going on here? I don't know, Signore. Tell me, did you see Galin? Yes, this place is alive with cops. What happened? Please tell me, Signore. I've been waiting all morning. Let me sit here. Galin's a man who buys and sells things. Anything of value. Well, your father bought jewelry in Italy, smuggled it into Switzerland to convert into cash. All he was trying to do was change his assets into American money. At the worst, he was guilty of evading currency restrictions. Now, tell me everything you know about this Visconti, the man who was employed by your father. Well, he was my father's assistant. Mm -hmm. He's about um, 25. He came off into our house. Monsieur Templar, may I talk with you, please? I'll be right back. I would like you to come to police headquarters. Again, what for? For purposes of identification, we have got the man who killed Filippo Ravina. Ah, well. You were able to identify the body? It's Garcia, all right. You sure? Positively. Mm-hmm. Why was he in your room? Isn't that obvious? Because you had seen him killing Ravenna, he wished to eliminate you. Don't you agree? Possibly, but uh, on the other hand, I do not always believe the obvious. Captain, you don't think that I killed him? Mr. Templar, for the moment, my opinions are my business and not yours. Thank you for your help. You may go. We meet again, Mr. Templer. And now, you're going to answer a few questions. I'm always at the service of the Swiss police. You knew? I guessed. Indeed. May I ask how? Mr. Inspector? Inspector Kleinhaus, believe me, I mean no offense. But plainclothes detectives are the same the world over. There's little mannerisms, habits. For example, the gun you're hiding under your hat. See what I mean? Now, why don't you put it away and we'll trade information like gentlemen? Mr. Templer, it is a pleasure to do business with you. My name's Visconti. I believe you have a room for me. Uh, Visconti, um... <laughs> ah, yes. Signora Ravenna booked it last night. Carlo, I thought you'd never get here. As soon as you telephoned, I took the next plane. Helen, I'm so sorry. Poor Filippo. Oh, it's been terrible. I'm nearly out of my mind. Ah, good morning, Signora. Uh, Monsieur, I am most sorry. Your room is not yet ready. I will give you the first one available. Oh, it doesn't matter. Never mind. Bring your bag up to mine. Don't bother. Grazie.
Carlo, what happened? I don't know. I, I was willing to steal from Filippo because part of it was mine anyway, and we needed capital when we got to America. But, but to kill him, what went wrong? Cassio went to fight. It was an accident. Do you realize what will happen if we're caught? We're accessories to murder. Keep your voice down. Oh, he's out. Make sure. Alfredo. Where is he? Oh, I don't know. But I think he suspects something. Oh, Carlo, I'm so afraid. Well, don't show it. Well, I haven't quite your capacity for ruthlessness. Now, tell me exactly what happened. You tell me. It was your idea. My idea? You couldn't wait to get rid of Filippo. You hired Garcia. I told him there was to be no violence. I don't care what you told him. Filippo's dead and Garcia stabbed him. Last night, the police questioned me for over two hours. And? Well, I told him I didn't know what was in the briefcase or, or where Filippo was going with it. They believed you. I don't know. But you did hear from Garcia. Garcia is dead. He fell from one of the balconies this morning. I don't know how it happened. I've been afraid to ask any questions. The hotel's been crawling with police all morning. And the briefcase? I don't know where it is. And the whole thing's been pointless. Oh, no. Don't say that. We'll manage somehow. Without money? If I must work for my living, I live in Rome, not in New York. Answer it. Hello? Is this Signora Ravenna? Signora, this is Paul Gallant speaking. Your husband came to my house this morning. No doubt you know why. I wonder if I could have a word with him. Just a moment. It's Gallant. He says Filippo came to see him this morning. This morning? Yes. But that's impossible. What will I say? Obviously, he thinks Filippo's still alive. Carlo, he's holding the line. He wants Filippo. What will I say? Take a message. I'm sorry, Monsieur Gillon. The maid was in the room. Uh, my husband isn't here right now. May I take a message? Well, signora, your husband was coming to my house tonight at 8. Suddenly, a very important client of mine arrived in Geneva from Paris, and I must meet him at his hotel at 8. Instead at seven. Oh, I I'm sure that'll be all right, Monsieur. Uh, I'll tell him. Thank you. Goodbye. Did you hear all that? Yes. Galan wants Filippo to go at seven instead of eight. Helen. Filippo and Galan never met. So somebody could impersonate Filippo, and Galan would never know the difference. Well, I, I guess so. That's obviously what's happened. My note to Gala was in the jewel box. Whoever has it is calling himself Filippo Ravina. Carlo. I know who it is. Who? His name is Templar, Simon Templar. He was watching us when we were in the airport at Rome, and he was talking to Alfredo on the plane. Last night, he must have followed Filippo when he left the hotel. He's had the briefcase all along. But, Inspector Kleinhaus, I heard them, every word. My boy, it is the uncorroborated word of a rather prejudiced teenager against the word of two adults. The Garcia dead, we can't prove a thing. Please, Mr. Templar, you must do something. Inspector, I have no right to interfere, but I may be able to help. Mr. Templar, I know your reputation. Poor Garcia has already met justice. No. The only way to catch the two people behind this is to force them into betraying themselves. All right, they know I saw Gala. They think I'm seeing him again tonight. They know I have the briefcase. They think they're in the clear. Now, suppose I do everything they expect me to, but add a little bit more. What would you like? Oh, anything. Uh, bourbon on the rocks, I guess. Bourbon with ice for the signora. For me, Campari. I can't get over the feeling that we're being watched. I've had it ever since leaving Rome. 
You're imagining things, Helen. I'm so afraid. Of being caught? And other things. You're so young, you don't understand what it means. We're responsible for two men dying. We'll remember that all our lives. You speak for yourself. Meaning to you it doesn't matter? What matters to me is getting back what is ours. Temple will go to Galar's house tonight at 8. Galar won't be there. But I will. I'll get the briefcase back. And tomorrow you and I will go to America. Everything will be just as we planned. Now, you know what to do? Si, signore. I don't know how much it's going to be, so here's 3,000 francs. Now, get going and hurry. Is Inspector Kleiner going... He's watching them. Don't worry. Front desk, please. Uh, Jacques, this is Simon Templer. How would you like to earn yourself a fast 200 francs? Oh, for you, Monsieur Templer, anything, any time. Oui? Yes, I understand. Come in. Did you get it? Si, signore. Good work. You change. Oh, thanks. You don't count it? Why should I? We're partners, aren't we? You <laughs> see, partners and friends. Are they still in the bar? See, si, Inspector Kleinos is watching them. Good, I'll uh, be back in four minutes. Oh, Alfredo, the key to your room. Grazie. Five past seven. If I want to get to Galaz before Templar arrives, I should leave here in ten minutes. Carl, let me come with you. Helen Carr. Believe me, I can handle this better alone. Besides, this man Templar is dangerous. Any servants? Yes, but they know me. I've sent him clients before. Oh, Carlo, no, no gun, please. Don't be stupid. But what if you're caught? I won't be caught. The police couldn't possibly connect us with Garcia. Carlo, you do love me, don't you? Helen, I've got things to do. Please, you've got to tell me. Otherwise, none of this means anything. Helen, of course I love you. Very much. Mr. Templar, since uh, 20 minutes. Okay, Jacques, go to it. Oui, monsieur. Signore, let me come with you. I promise I won't get in your way. I may even help. And you said we were partners. Please? All right, but keep out of sight. Si, grazie. Come in. There is a bag for Monsieur Visconti. Uh, what room is it? Madame? Well, his room wasn't ready when he checked in. Isn't that why you're taking his bag? Oh, no, madame. I am told just to take Monsieur Visconti's bag to the lobby and that he is checking out. Checking out? Callan's house is around the next bend. 
Get on, keep out of sight. Si, senor. But I tell you, it's ridiculous. Senor Visconti has no intention of checking out tonight. Madame, he has checked out. He told me himself to have his luggage taken from your room and sent to the airport. Airport? But why? Obviously, madame, because he's catching a plane. But, but that's impossible. Madame, I'm only doing as I'm instructed. Senor Visconti is catching flight 407, leaving tonight for Buenos Aires. Are, are you sure of this? But of course, madame. I booked his space myself. Is uh, something wrong? Get me a taxi, quickly. Oh, oui, madame. A taxi for madame. Monsieur Gallo will be sorry to have missed you, signore. I'm sorry too, Charles. However, now that I'm here, I shall wait and see Signor Avina. As you wish, Signor. Oh, that must be him now. Just show him in, will you? Of course. Oh, and Charles. Si, Signore. It is not necessary to tell him that Monsieur Gala is out. Si, Signore. Signora Vina. Thank you, Charles. Don't disturb us. Si, signore. Hello, Visconti. You know who I am? Of course. You don't seem surprised. Why should I be? I expected to see you here. Why? The ways of the ungodly are usually predictable. <laughs> And I fall into that category. Don't you think so? Perhaps. And now, since we understand each other, let's get to the point. Put the briefcase on the desk, please. And now, back up. Well, put your hands up, please. On the left. <laughs> Grazie. You're a very wise man, Mr. Templer. You know when the odds are against you. Driver, will you please hurry? I'm going now, Mr. Templer. If you try to stop me, I'll kill you. I'm sure you will. You've killed before. You mean Felipe Rovina? Who else? I was in Rome when that happened. I could... Monsieur Gallin's back early. I know him very well. I think you'll take my word for what's happened, especially since it's true. The police think differently. Oh, the police don't think at all. Why have you come here? I'll give you one guess. I told you to wait at the hotel. It would have been a long wait, wouldn't it? What are you talking about? Oh, Carlo, I know. I, I have the whole picture. I know you've checked out of the hotel, and I know you have an airplane ticket. Checked out? Yes, when they came for your bag, I talked to the desk clerk. You have a seat on flight 407, leaving Geneva tonight at 10.15. Are you going out of your head? You and I are flying off to New York tomorrow. How? By way of Buenos Aires? Oh, come on, Visconti, admit it. You bought a one-way ticket to Buenos Aires this afternoon. Helen, he's making this up. Can't you get it through your head? I know. The ticket's in the briefcase, Mrs. Ravena. Take a look. I was sitting in the lobby this afternoon. I saw him put it there. He's lying. If you don't believe me, search the briefcase. Go on. You overplayed it, Visconti. You were too confident. Stay where you are and shut up! You see? A ticket to Buenos Aires with your name on it. You're a liar. He planned this? To be with you, I became an accessory to murder. Helen, shut up! This is exactly what he wants! You knew Felipe would be killed, didn't you? All right, I did! It was all an act right from the beginning, wasn't it? You never had any intention of going away with me. Not for one minute. You're old, you're dull, and you're ugly. This is what I wanted, and now I've got it. Nice work, Alfredo. 
I think I'll take over now, Mr. Templer. Come on in, Oscar. Meet my playmates. This is Detective Inspector Oscar Kleinhaus of the Swiss Police. Our little cooperative venture worked very well, Mr. Templer. Yes, it did. By the way, what's going to happen to Mrs. Ravenna? I do not know. <laughs> but I suspect the court will be lenient. You see, her greatest sin was weakness. The weakness of an older woman for a young man. I see. Oh, how about the jewels? Oh, the boy will get them as part of his father's estate. Ah. Morning, Alfredo. All set? Si, signore. Fine, I'll drive you to the airport. Oh, by the way, Alfredo, somehow or other, these got into my pocket. Now, yours, I think. Partner. Si. Partner? <laughs> <laughs>